Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing my own experiment to test out if it's possible to fly on the surface of Mars. For most intents and purposes, the surface of Mars is a vacuum. And what I mean by that is, the same thing that's going to happen out in space is the same thing that's going to happen on the surface of Mars. For example, if you threw a bunch of marshmallows on the surface of Mars, this will happen. Or threw a bag of chips, this would happen. The reason violent things like this happen on the surface of Mars or in space is because the pressure differential is about one atmosphere. So no matter what, you're going to get about the same pressure differential on the surface of Mars as you are out in space. Even though the surface of Mars is very close to a complete vacuum, it's not quite a complete vacuum. The pressure is around 0.095 psi. Now that's an extremely low pressure, but it's enough to do something significant, like fly. If you hadn't heard yet, the Martian Helicopter Ingenuity recently completed its very first flight on Mars. Now fun fact, if you don't know what Ingenuity is, just search it on Google and watch what happens. You can actually control its flight around the screen, it's pretty cool. Now if we're going to be able to fly a helicopter on Mars, because of the extremely low pressure, what that means is that we need very large blades, are really low weight, and those blades need to spin really fast. The way Ingenuity was able to fly is it has four rotors that are around 1.2 meters in diameter, and it also it only weighs 1.8 kilograms. And another thing Ingenuity has going for it is Mars's gravity is around a third of Earth's gravity, so it doesn't have to generate as much lift on Mars as it would have to on Earth. But the problem is, I don't have enough room in my vacuum chamber to make rotors that are that long, so I need to reduce the size to about this size. But the problem with this is the motors and the batteries don't scale proportionally like this, and so I can't actually make them as small as I need to to get those same ratios. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to be taking the motors and battery with me. I'm just going to be flying the blade only. So the way this works is pretty cool. I'm just going to set it on top of my motor here, and it actually doesn't click in place or anything. It just sits there. And so once it spins fast enough, it can lift off of the motor all by itself, and then we can see if it can fly. So in that way, it doesn't have to take the motor with it. So I'm going to turn it on and get it spinning, and I'll get it spinning fast enough that it's going to take off from the launch pad here. So once it starts flying, it's not going to have any power behind it, but it should generate enough power to get it lifted off. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Whoa! <laughs> So you can see that in regular air, I can easily get this to fly. You can see it also easily flies in the setup in the vacuum chamber under normal atmospheric pressure. Okay, let's turn on our vacuum chamber now. Okay, three, two, one. The number on top is the pressure in the vacuum chamber right now, and this is in the units of bars. So to get to the surface pressure of Mars, what we need to do is get between 0.00 and 0.01 bars. The pressure on the surface of Mars is 0.0065 bars. So if we can get down to at least 0.01, we're going to be right near that pressure. And 0.00 just means it can't read any lower, but it's going to be right around the pressure of Mars. Okay, we're right near the pressure we need to get to. Let's see it bounce between 0 .00 and 0 0.01. Okay, there we go. Okay, let's see if we can actually get this to fly. Spin it. Try again. Oh, wow. Okay, now that was crazy. So one small side effect of being in a vacuum is that your fan can spin much faster than it can spin in air. So I think I overdid it there. Let's try it again without going so fast and see if it can fly. Okay. Come on.
I just can't get unhooked. Come on. Hey, it's flying. Okay, was that actually flight? <laughs> okay, so we were able to get it to actually fly up in the air, but it's a little bit hard to see because it's bouncing around so much, so maybe it just got knocked the right way and shot up in the air. So to show that we're actually generating lift, I'm going to put it on a scale in there, and you can see the weight decrease as we turn on the fan and increase the lift. So let's test out how much my blade weighs here. It's around 1.935 grams. Okay, here we go. Let's see if it goes down in weight. So it's at around two grams right now. Oh, easily goes down. So that's around 0.7 grams reduction. Now I wanna note something here. The only reason that I'm able to measure the amount of lift with the scale here is because the surface of the scale is smaller than the surface of the blade here. If the surface of my scale was bigger than the surface of my blade here and it was able to catch all of the air coming down on it, then I actually wouldn't be able to measure any lift. You can see in a previous experiment I did, if you try to measure the weight of a drone that's hovering in the air, you actually won't measure a registered change on the scale because the downward force of the air is exactly equaling the weight of the drone. That's how it's flying. But in this case, I'm able to do it because the scale isn't covering the full area, so it's not capturing all of the pressure down from the air being forced down from the fan. And so I can measure a little bit of change. It's actually under measuring it because some of the air is hitting the scale itself and that pushes down on it. And so it doesn't fully register the amount of lift that we're getting. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And you can also check out my shorts channel where I do shorter versions of the videos that I do on this channel. And check out theactionlab.com if you haven't seen it yet. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.